So chapter 2 is descriptive statistics. So in chapter 1 I mentioned that statistical methods are broadly divided into two categories. One of them is descriptive statistics, other is inferential statistics where we draw inference about the population. The most common forms of describing data or summarizing data are basically you can summarize data in tables, graphs and charts or just numbers. First type of example of descriptive statistics we could start with qualitative data. And for this one let's make use of uh, example 2.6. Now suppose you have this qualitative data where Park, Park City is broken down into six voting districts, district one, two, three, and six. So they have already given you a tabular summary. The data that they collected is summarized in the form of a table with three columns. The table shows percent of total registered voters population that lives in each district. Construct a bar graph, so create a bar chart basically for the second column. You can do that by hand, you can do that in Excel. For this class, we'll use uh, another platform where at least you learn a new skill that you can put on your resume or maybe highlight or maybe use it for your future projects also. Let's go to kaggle.com, K-A-G-G-L-E dot com. Initially, you'll see this page. So Kaggle was a company developed by some people as a platform where various companies can come and put their data and announce like some kind of competitions where people can apply statistical methods or whatever method they know and solve business problems. So sometimes those competitions will be like if you win that competition you can get like $200,000 or $500,000. So many people sometimes join as a team and compete. It could be for experience or sometimes if you can win, nothing like that. And later on Google saw some value in this company and it was purchased by Google. So now it is part of Google. You can register or sign in. I will use my Google account. You may not see some of the things that I have. But on the left side, you'll see some options like competitions. So there's a competition running, which is for $1.1 million. Whoever wins, 55,000, two months to go, three months to go. So these kind of competitions keep on running all the time. But these are quite challenging competitions. Please click on code on the left, go to code and click on new notebook. So we'll open a new notebook where we'll do this bar plot. So new notebook. Let me know once you are on this page. When you open, you see a default uh, screen <coughs> We can give this a name. We can give this notebook a name. So I'm going to call this chapter two. It will be called chapter two. And then go to file. Go to file at the top and come to language. So we want to use a particular particular language for doing our analysis. So if you click on that, you'll see that default is Python and the other one is R. So there are two languages which are very, very popular for working with data. Select R 
and that's what we are going to use for the rest of our class. Okay, we'll do this. If you click on plus code, it will open a new empty box and I will just uh, get rid of this box or simply hide it. One very basic thing when working with this program is that it is case sensitive. Something is lowercase, you have to use lowercase. If something is uppercase, you have to use uppercase. And to use this is very simple, like if I want to do, let's say, 2 plus 2. If I do 2 plus 2 and hit play button on the left, it will immediately give answer below this box. So first time it has to get started and all that, but then you get an answer here. So the idea is we type there and we get answer below. I'll remove this. We'll create uh, two variables. One is used for district and other for second column. So I'll just use two uh, labels like X and Y. X will be one to six. So X and then C and within parentheses we put all the numbers. Now whatever we put inside, that will get stored in X. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six districts, so I'm simply going to say one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that is our X, one of the variables. And another variable we'll create is Y. Again, same format, C. Within parentheses, we put all the data points. So we have our data ready, stored in X and Y. And then we use a command to just create bar plot. And then within parentheses, what do we want to plot? So we can say y versus x. So y will go on y-axis. These numbers should be y-axis. And on x-axis, you should have x. So, but before that, we have to put a symbol. This curly sign below your escape button. Below escape button, you have this curly sign and then you say X, and that's it. You get a bar plot. So those are the districts, one, two, three, up to six, and then you have percentages. This is a default bar plot, but obviously like sometimes we want to give a title, we may not like default colors, we may want to change colors, or give a label, like what, what is the meaning of X, what does y-axis mean, like y is percentage, so that when we are creating, we may know what y means, what x means, but when you are presenting in a room of 50 people, they may not know what is x and y. So it is always a good idea to label them so that everybody is on the same page. So after x, you can put comma, and let's say we are interested in y, lab, y label, so for that, we type Y L A B for Y label Y L A B is equal to and names or text they should always be in quotation mark so we'll call it percentage now again if you touch this play button you'll notice that it has updated Y axis label and calls it percentage yeah So, so, a so uh, did you uh, go to file, go to file, go to language, and you may have Python, you should use R. Uh, okay. Yeah. So that will, that should solve the problem.
Now these are default colors. If you don't like these colors, you want your own colors. Again, you can put a comma and add more features. So there's no end to like how many features you can add. So for color, we say COL equal. So suppose uh, we want the color to be pink. So you play and the color will change to whatever you like. Or if you want like all bars to have a different color, you can even use rainbow. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I can say I want six different colors from the rainbow and it will change those colors quickly. So earlier we used Y lab, Y label. Now we can use X label, X lab. So X L A B equal within quotation. So whenever we have text, we use quotation, use registered voters and hit play button. So you'll see that now on the x-axis, so it looks more complete. In this bar plot, you'll notice that these bars have gaps. They are not continuous because this is not a continuous data. Bar plots are never used for continuous data. They are used for qualitative data and you'll always see a gap. So districts are like one and then two, there's nothing in between, there's no in between label. So that's why there's always a gap. So that's how like uh, bar plot is constructed. And bar plots can only be used for qualitative data. We don't use bar plot for continuous data. So bar plot is one example. Another example of a graph or a chart with quali qualitative data is pie chart. So pie chart also is very common. So if you want to create a pie chart, so let's add one more box here and what we use is pi. Simply say pi and within parenthesis our data is y, those percentages. So if you run that, you get pi chart. Sometimes comparison I would say is much easier when you look at the bar plot because you can compare the bars and see like which one is low, which one is high more accurately. We saw examples of bar plot. We saw example of pie chart. Now similarly, we do descriptive statistics with quantitative data. So one example could be number of steps. And suppose you want to get an idea about like usually how much people walk on our campus. Let me collect data from you. It will be approximate number if you know how much you walked yesterday. Let me start from this side. Me? Yeah. Number of steps I walked. Walked yesterday. <sighs> Roughly. Bro, probably like 15. I don't know. It better. 15, really? No, no. Okay. I don't know. Okay. More, uh, when I say approximately, uh, more realistic. A thousand. thousand? Okay, thousand makes sense. I was just doing laundry. Okay. Four thousand. Obviously, this is again approximation, it is not a reality. As I said earlier, we never have access to reality, like exact number. We always have approximations. And data represents approximation of reality. Uh, how close it is, it is to reality, that is a good data. How far away from reality your data is, obviously is not so good data. But this is the data we have, which we can call quantitative. It can be summarized uh, in the form of tables. It can be summarized in the form of graphs and charts. Let's group them in some range. 
So we have to look at like what is minimum and what is maximum. Minimum is 10, uh, 1,000. Maximum is, I think, 21,000, right? So if we make a group of 2,000, like 0 to 2,000, 2,000 to 4,000, that should capture almost everything. Typically, to summarize the data, we form groups. And then we do tally mark. We go through each data point and so for example, first one is 1,000, so it will be somewhere here. Then 4,000 is here. And then we have 556. Five, so 556. Five, so that summarizes data in the form of a table. Did you want the class eight? That was the email and you want.